everyone, it's Laura from the Keep It Running podcast. Today we are joined by Cameron Rogers. She was the 2018 World U20 Champion in Hammer Throw, as well as the 2019 NCAA Champion, and is currently a student athlete at UC Berkeley. We will be talking about how Cameron got started in throwing, how she dealt with the Olympics being postponed, and how she has become a better athlete through the uncertainty of the past year. Hey, Cameron. Hi, good morning. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing well, thank you. I'm very excited to be on talking with you today. Oh, we're super excited to have you on. Thank you. Are you in California right now? I am. I am. I have practice in about an hour and a half so it is a good morning uh yeah but yes right now in berkeley california we're actually starting school on monday which is pretty exciting uh, um but yeah very nice sounds like you're you're pretty busy so we're super happy that you took the time to come on um but yeah, can you just kind of give us a little uh, story about how you got started in throwing? Oh, definitely. Okay. So I think one thing that I find kind of funny about how I got into hammer throwing was that it was actually a last minute decision. So basically, all the way back on January 5th, 2012, I always remember the date. <laughs> um, I it's just kind of with my mom and we were just kind of, I don't know. We were doing something. I think we were like running or getting groceries or I don't know, just a normal kind of day. And at that point we had both been told that the first practice of the new year was starting with the track club that I am now a part of at home. And up until that point, I had always kind of been like, oh, you know, like, maybe one day I might want to get into track, maybe one day, you know, I'll go out and kind of see, see what it's like. And then on that day, I think it was like 15 minutes before the first practice started. And my mom had been told because a couple of her friends and clients were in the club at the time. And we just thought, you know what? why don't we just go? Why don't we just go and see and meet the people and just learn a little bit more about what track and field is really all about. And that was the day that I met my first coach, uh, coach Richard Collier. And that's kind of the day that it all started. Cause after that day, I went back <laughs> every single day. Uh, yeah. I never looked back because I had never done a sport before track. So this really was like my first big uh, thing that I was extremely passionate about and still am passionate about. Was it uh, strictly a throwing practice or when you went, was it kind of all different events that you tried out? So I think at that time, there might have been some sprinters practicing as well, but take that with a grain of salt. But basically that day uh, was when I met and all the throwers were practicing. And so it really was kind of just an introduction into throwing. Okay. And I was like, oh my gosh, like, like what are they doing? Because most of them were doing hammer throw that day and I'd never seen it before. Because at that point, I was 12. <laughs> and so they definitely don't have hammer throw in elementary school track. They, um, <laughs> I had never really had the opportunity to see hammer throw before that day. And so it just seemed so exciting and so fast paced and just absolutely incredible. And so that day when we were talking to the coach, just kind of seeing how the practice was, seeing what the environment was like, what the team was like. And I was like, okay, yeah, I definitely need to come back and try this. And so we came back the very next day and I just remember 
being there and being like, oh my god, what do I do? Like, I don't even think I really know what a proper warm-up is. <laughs> so, I'm like, <laughs> will I survive today? Maybe. But he was amazing. He walked me through everything and what to do, and I just... Oh, I so clearly remember him kind of giving me a hammer, just and just being like, okay, now go throw it. And I'm like, <laughs> throw what? <laughs> but he's like, okay, just do this, this, this. We'll just see how it goes. And I did. And he said, okay, we can work with this. <laughs> and so that was like the first, yeah, that was the first time I'd ever thrown a hammer. <laughs> wow. So did you throw it pretty far right off the bat? Was your coach like, whoa, this girl is going to be a world champion? You know what? I think the hammer might have gone like five meters. <laughs> so I don't know <laughs> what it was, but he said, you know what? We're going to, we're going to, we're going to see where this goes. We're going to try and teach you how to do hammer throw. And I'm really glad that he did. I love it. <laughs> um, how did you choose UC Berkeley? <sighs> My gosh, I I love this question. Whenever we have like recruits come and they're walking around camp, well, before COVID, <laughs> no, like walking around practice, or we're just talking with them on like a Zoom call now or something, and they ask us, you know, what it was. I always think back to when I was on my visit because my host on my visit was a girl who is now graduated, but was a thrower on the team. She was a discus thrower. And I was staying with her in her dorm. And I think we were gonna go out on my second night. So like the last night of me being on my visit at Cal. And I was kind of just, I remember asking her, I was like, hey, can I just, can I just like go outside for a second? I'll be like right back. And she was like, oh yeah, definitely go ahead. And so I went into like a little stairwell and I called my mom and I said, mom, I need to be here. Mom, I, I need to, I need to be here. And she said, okay, let's do this. So for me, when I was on my visit, I remember just taking one step onto the campus and thinking, wow, this this place is pretty cool. <laughs> this place is pretty amazing. I mean, it Cal for me had had everything. We have such a strong academic environment. It's extremely competitive. Um I guess a quick plug <laughs> that it's it's the number one public university in the world, you know, so you're going to be challenged academically. You're going to meet people at the highest level in their fields, along with some of your classmates who are also very, very, very intelligent and, you know, are going to be very accomplished as well. And then for the athletic side, I mean, my coach here, uh, Mo Satara. Coach Satara and I have this great understanding and relationship, especially with Hammer. And it was the kind of relationship that, you know, you think, okay, this is, this sport is something I want to commit to for the next four years of my life. And I think that this is the place where I will be able to do that and where I can be successful. And I'm very, I'm just so happy <laughs> to be here and to be a golden bear, you know, I mean, I'm in my senior year and because of everything with the seasons being canceled last year with COVID, I, I'll be here for another year, but, you know, every day I'm, I'm just grateful that I get to be here. The team is so supportive and it's always, you always feel like you're getting pushed, which is you know, the kind of atmosphere that you want to have in training. You always want to feel like you are getting better and you are reaching for that next level and that you have people alongside you who will help you to get there. And so it, 
it just felt very much like the place that I needed to be at. So, yeah. That's great. Yeah, it seems like you have a lot of pride for your school and that it kind of checked all the boxes that you were looking for, but you also had that kind of gut feeling when you stepped on campus that that's where you wanted to be. Oh, most definitely. <laughs> most definitely. <laughs> um, so how did you deal uh, with the Olympics getting postponed? If you have time for, I think, one more story. <laughs> Definitely. But, oh my gosh. Last year was very much a whirlwind. And I think everyone can agree that, especially at the very beginning, it, it was absolutely crazy. So at the time that the Olympics had been postponed, I was already actually home. But I wasn't home because I, because, you know, things had started. We were realizing kind of where the pandemic was going and, you know, schools were starting to go online. And so, you know, I just thought, oh, go home. I had actually gone home uh, of my own volition before COVID and everything for a weekend visit. It was going to be my last kind of visit home before you know, the outdoor season really started. It was the weekend of indoor nationals. So NCAA indoor nationals. And so I had a couple teammates, uh, both shot putters who made it to nationals. And so, and I had taken the indoor season, I had registered my indoor season. So I decided to go home on a Wednesday. I think it was like Wednesday, March 11th or something. So by the Thursday, <laughs> That first day that I was home, the NCAA canceled all sports for the entire season. And by the end of the weekend, the borders had closed and I actually couldn't go back. So at first I was like, okay, you know, maybe it's going to, like, maybe I'll be able to go back to school in like maybe a few weeks. <laughs> Cause Keep in mind, at this point, a weekend visit, all of my stuff was still in my apartment. I hadn't said goodbye to any of my teammates. I, because, you know, you think you just think, okay, it's going to be a weekend visit and I don't need to, you know, I don't need to pack anything. I went home with a backpack. It had like my laptop wow. for school. And thankfully, oh my gosh, I had my throwing stuff with me. All, all of my training stuff with me. Phew. <laughs> but... <laughs> yeah by the end of that weekend the yeah the borders had completely closed and my family and I were just kind of realizing this is this is going to be a while like it's going to be a while before I can get back and I didn't really know what to think at the time because everything was still so unknown and so I called my coach I called coach Mo and I just said you know what do we do now? <laughs> like, like when you, with all of the competitions being canceled, with all of the, you know, with practices getting canceled as well, I was just thinking, okay, you know, where do we go from here? And he just has this way of kind of like hyping me up, but also calming me down <laughs> at the same time. And he basically said, you know what? We're going to take it day by day. We're going to see what happens. We're going to work with what we can work with. And we were going to eliminate every possible, like, thing that could possibly make training harder or make it harder to do what we need to do. We're going to control as much as we can and then work with what we can and so I said, okay. And so I was able to rent a barbell and I think one set of 45 pound plates from my trainer at home. And I was doing at home workouts with, uh, with my little setup and wasn't able to fully throw for, for a while, but that was, that's where we were at the time. 
And I, looking back now, feel very thankful that, you know, I even had that. Because even though I wasn't throwing, I was doing something. You know, they're talking to teammates I had who don't live near facilities or don't have the kind of equipment that you need to have in order to fully train or even partially train. It was a very difficult time. And at least, you know, in terms of athletics. And so people weren't sure exactly what what could be done or even you know what what people were training for with everything being canceled but I think that one of the most important things that I had to learn while I was at home for those seven months because I was able to come back to school in September was basically what he said was prepare for what we can and accept what we can and work with it. Yeah, I love that mindset of taking it day by day. I think for a lot of student athletes, we're so used to planning and goal setting. And especially in an Olympic year, people are planning for it sometimes even four years in advance. So for everything just to suddenly be so unknown um, was kind of shocking for a lot of student athletes. And I think that, yeah, you you definitely taking it day by day was the best thing to do. I think so, too. And you're <laughs> definitely right. And yeah, it was just very much that, okay, so what do we do now? <laughs> kind of Kind of thinking at the beginning, but, you know, very thankful to be surrounded by so many amazing people and have such a strong support system who are who believe in me who know that this may be the situation now but we are still training for something we are still reaching for a goal there is still something that we are working towards and keeping that in mind throughout training was also extremely helpful because it wasn't just like this vast future of like cloudiness and the unknown you know it's keeping the goal in mind always yeah for sure I think it was also kind of an interesting time to think about like why am I doing this and what am I training for even if there isn't an end goal like it was kind of a time for a lot of people to figure out um like their love for their sport again Maybe sometimes when there's always kind of an end goal, you're always kind of pushing for it. It can be easy to kind of get lost in that cycle of training and competing. Uh, But I think for a lot of people, when the competitions were taken away, it was just like, okay, well, I'm getting up every day and I'm training and I'm doing it because I love doing this. For sure. And I think that's a beautiful thing is in the middle of training or you're yeah, they're in a hard practice and everything kind of hurts <laughs> and you're kind of just taking a second to like get water or just think about what else you need to do during that day and it kind of hits you. Wow, I really love what I'm doing. Yeah, absolutely. Um, do you have any upcoming meets planned? We do. Which makes me so excited. The smile is already coming to my face. I'm so happy that I'm able to say that. (laughs) Uh, We have our first indoor meet next weekend at Air Force Academy in Colorado. So that is very exciting. And yeah, I think we're going to be leaving next Thursday. So that's going to be amazing. Already getting pumped up. And... I think we have another one there as well. It's been interesting to kind of see how our indoor season gets planned out since there were so many concerns with having so many athletes in, you know, a closed space and how are we going to do it with like warm ups? How are we going to regulate like the number of people who can be in the facility at all times and hearing about 
what it's taken in order for us to be able to compete, you know, makes me all the more grateful and excited that we're able to go and that I can throw on my golden bears, uh, my golden bears singlet. Once again, I'm wearing a California oh, shirt you. today, <laughs> <laughs> but it's going to be amazing. I'm very much looking forward to getting back out there with my team and just to be in that circle again. I, the last time I competed was at the Pan American games in August in 2019. Wow. So it has been a while. It's been a while, which means I am all the more pumped up to get back into it. And especially to have that build into the outdoor season as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so what is one thing, you may have already answered this earlier, but uh, what is one thing that you feel like you've learned throughout the pandemic? Oh, I think I would definitely have to go back to what it was that I mentioned earlier with learning what is and is not in my control. Yeah. Because, and, I mean, I think as athletes, you have to learn to be flexible. You aren't always going to have the perfect warm up conditions. You know, maybe your travel is gets delayed, <laughs> delayed, delayed. <laughs> maybe, <laughs> you know, your competition time gets pushed. What are you going to do? You have to be flexible. You have to learn to deal with these sudden changes, but you also need to be prepared for it. So when it happens, you adjust and you come back with the exact same amount of ferocity as you had going in initially. And I think being home and having so many different so many things changing all at the same time and it felt like it felt like you were getting changes and decisions and everything daily at that point as well with are we going to allow athletes to come back and practice are we going to have them get tested you know every day or is it going to be every week or you know what's happening and are we going to let people fly back you know, I, like, would I even be able to come back this year? Yeah. But learning that, I think, just makes you a better athlete. But it also just prepares you in every other way for the future, because nothing will ever be completely set in stone. And knowing and learning the steps that you can take and how to deal with things when they don't go exactly according to plan is very important and yeah I think that at the end of the day it really just makes you a stronger athlete and a stronger person yeah for sure I like how you had mentioned that that you know the skills that you learn through athletics can translate so well to life and I think that's flexibility is one of the many lessons that you can become a better person um, as an athlete and a person Definitely, for sure. Okay, we're going to do a quick rapid fire questions to, end, okay. to end it off. Okay. Um, <laughs> so, I'm ready. Salsa or guacamole? Guac. Salsa is like very close second though, but guac, for sure, guac. Okay, Instagram or Snapchat? Instagram. I feel like I don't use Snapchat anymore. I don't know why. Yeah. I feel bad for all my Snapchat friends, but I don't know. That Instagram for me is the place to be. Day. Maybe. I personally think it's the food videos. Low-key obsessed, but... Like Insta food <laughs> videos? Yeah, those can be pretty... Uh, oh. <laughs> pretty good. You watch one, and all of a sudden, it's like two two hours later. You're like, you're, wow, I yeah. now know how to make so many recipes. Now I just need to go and buy all the ingredients I need. <laughs> It's addicting. Uh, okay, breakfast for dinner or dinner for breakfast? 
I think I have to say breakfast for dinner. I think. Yeah. I think I just because we used to do that like when I was a kid more often than I probably do now. Maybe I should get back into it. You're giving me ideas over here. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I can't imagine just having like spaghetti for breakfast. So true. Dang. When I thought of it, I was like, could I just go and like eat a steak for breakfast? <laughs> could I do it? I mean I mean whatever works. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> whatever whatever gets those calories in, those nutrients. <laughs> That's right. Um and then cards or board games. Ooh. I'd have to say cards, but I think that's also because I didn't really play a ton of board games as a kid. Okay. So, like, I think I've just learned more card games over time. That's you fair. Know? Monopoly? Have you played Monopoly? Thankfully, I have played Monopoly. Oh, I think, thankfully, I know. Imagine if I hadn't, though. <laughs> Imagine <laughs> You've been if living I hadn't. under a rock. <laughs> Oh my gosh, a completely different world. Actually, okay, I'm going to ask that question back to you, though. Cards or board games? I think I'm a board game girl, yeah. Yeah? Okay. I love, like, Clue or The Game of Life, um, Ooh, okay. Story. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You have some ones. good choices there. <laughs> uh, and then last one, iced or hot coffee. This might be the hardest question you've asked me. Um, okay. I think just like day to day, normal life, I'd have to say hot coffee. Mostly because I also love making my own coffee at home. Because yeah. I have one of the little like stovetop maca pots where you just kind of like put it on the stove and it's like the cute little one and basically makes you like one cup's worth of coffee. Um, I think it's essentially like an espresso maker actually. Maybe yeah, I just see. always make too much espresso. <laughs> <laughs> but it's uh, but it's like just like a small little contraption and yeah, but I think if I'm feeling fancy, then definitely like iced because I enjoy like a coffee frap too. Yeah. 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 Very nice. Well, thank you so much for coming on and talking with me this morning. Um, good, best of luck with your season. Um, yeah, wish you the best. Thank you so much for having me. It was such a pleasure and very excited to be going back out there. And uh, good luck to you as well. It's going to uh, be an you. exciting year, an exciting yes. season. Excited to get, get back out there for sure. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> but uh okay. yeah thank you so much oh dr elna says good luck with your season ladies thank you thank you dr elna <laughs> all right bye camera amazing love it bye Thanks for tuning into this episode with Cameron and you can check us out on Instagram at keep it running podcast for live interviews every Friday.